What's up guys, it's me AJ and welcome to part 4 of our Northland vlog series. Last time we left off, we experienced some of the best fish and chips in New Zealand at the legendary Maunui Fish Shop, splurged in one of the most incredible confectionery shops at Makana Confections, and finished our day with an insane monster rib platter at Jimmy Jack's Rib Shack. If you missed any of that, make sure to check it out on our YouTube channel or on the links below. For now, we are off to explore the charming town of Russell across the water from Paihia. It's New Zealand's historic first capital and a great town to eat, relax, and explore. So let's get going to Russell and hope you all enjoy. So we just took the Opua to Russell car ferry. It's a very short, like 15 minute journey just across the water. The alternative is a 43 kilometer drive, so definitely take the ferry and don't waste your time. Yeah, it is $27 for one car, so it's pretty reasonable considering that the alternative is like a 43 kilometer drive. So let's go to Russell. Hello, so we made it to Russell, the historic town of Russell, the first capital of New Zealand and the site of the first permanent European settlement in the entirety of New Zealand. It's just a very quaint seaside town full of really historic buildings, cafes, just a very relaxing vibe next to the seaside and the beach. The water is really blue. You can actually see Paihia just across the seashore, which is very nice. I think we're going to hit up the Pompalier Mission, which is a very historically significant building. I think they have some French pastries and some espresso. Let's go. Just at the edge of the Russell Township is the Pompalier Mission and this little cute French coffee house right next to it. The Pompalier Mission is New Zealand's oldest industrial building, oldest Roman Catholic building, oldest rammed earth building. It used to be a printing press back in the day. I think they still use it as a printing press but mainly mostly just as an exhibition for guided tours which are available. But here we are at the French coffee house right next to it. Apparently they serve really great coffee, really great croissants and pastries. I'm very excited for their coffee. We got our our coffees and the vibe is officially set here at the French coffee house next to the Pompier mission. I just got myself a flat white as per usual. We also got an extra croissant and a pain au chocolat. They look absolutely delectable. Man, this is just a beautiful place to go out for a coffee. You got the sea next to us, the, the gentle sea breeze as well. Man, on a nice summer day, this is just a fantastic way to just spend a brunch, have some coffee, and just relax. I'm just gonna have a sip of my flat white, and just look at these spoons that they give with your with your coffees. They look like really great antiques. Just, it's just so cute, guys. It just sets the vibe, you know. Oh man, that's some really good coffee actually. Just the bitterness is on point. Perfectly, perfectly roasted. The milk is just so velvety. That foam, very nice. It's a quintessential flat white next to this gorgeous view. Man, summer is complete, guys. All right, so I got my usual, an iced soy latte. It came with some whipped cream and icing, which I don't usually have with my coffee, but let's give it a go with this beautiful view. Mm, it's quite strong, stronger than I usually like it. So it's actually quite nice with the ice cream and the whipped cream. Quite nice. Right, we just got a ham and cheese. I think it's just like a scroll, but it, was, it just sounded so flaky and buttery. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> mm. I was expecting nothing, but I got everything. Wow, that was so flaky and buttery, and that ham and cheese the filling was just magical. That caught me off guard. That was really good. Man. Mm. I think it's got some chives in there as well, which is really nice. But that's just a good ham and cheese scroll. Gonna take a bite of their freshly baked croissants, added some butter and some strawberry jam. <laughs> Ah. Mm. Perfectly light and flaky. The lamination is on point. With the butter and the and the strawberries, just a perfect breakfast pastry. So we got some panna chocolate. It looks very flaky, like just holding it. It looks really good and light. Mm. 
it's so buttery and flaky. And the chocolate, it's not too sweet, but it's a bit smoky. This is the platonic ideal. <laughs> That's my word. <laughs> no, actually, do you know where I got that from? Delaney. No, not, not even Delaney. It was this guy from Eater, from the yeah, meat show. Nick Solaris, yeah, me. Yeah. Nick Solaris. The platonic ideal. Yeah, Russell being by the sea, it's got quite a nice beach as well. The waves are very gentle, but the sand is all like pebbles and stuff. But yeah, still, you know, a very nice amenity to have in this very relaxing town. You may have been wondering, what series of life decisions has led me to this moment? Nothing good, nothing good clearly. Am I disappointed? Yes. Am I surprised? No. Am I? I am not really. So just a very short walk away from Russell, quite literally around the corner, 30 seconds you're there, is behind me is Christchurch, the very first church in New Zealand. It was built in 1835. It's an Anglican church, and back in the day, they used to hold services for the local population, both in English and Maori. It's a very culturally and historically significant church. The inside is quite charming, simple yet charming. It's got some stained glass windows. There's a cemetery outside. Overall, it's just a very quaint, charming church, fit for a very small town of Russell back in the day. After exploring the town for a bit, we headed up to Flagstaff Hill, only a short 5 minute drive away. Not only is it one of the best places to soak up some 360 views of the Bay of Islands, but it is a very historically significant site. After the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi in February of 1840, tensions grew between the local Maori and British colonials. Honiheke, a local Maori chief, cut down the flagstaff flying the Union Jack four times as an act of defiance. This would lead to the outbreak of the flagstaff war between the British and the Maori, culminating in a contentious stalemate. The flagstaff that you see today is the fifth one and luckily this historic site is easily accessible so this is definitely a must visit. Alright, it is lunchtime. We made our way back to the Russell Town Center and hit up Butterfish for lunch. It is right next to the water. The view is very nice. I feel at peace. I feel so relaxed. There are two other restaurants that are really famous here that we wanted to go to. There's the Gables, which is one of the oldest restaurants in New Zealand, and the Duke of Marlborough Hotel, the, the famous Duke of Marlborough Hotel. But both of them are much pricier than this, so we just got some of their lunch menu. Their menu looks like a mix of just normal Western food and, and some Asian fusion, which we got. We got six dishes. We're really hungry. Let's eat. Alright, just got a latte for now. It is a hot summer's day, but that's not gonna stop me from getting a hot coffee. Ooh, bitter. That foam is very foamy. <laughs> very nice. Let's get on with the food. Right, got some seafood chowder, of course, because you know, the seafood correspondent is back. Got some potato and fish pieces. Looks very uh, creamy. Nice and delicate. The chowder, I believe it has like dried oregano, so it has a bit of an herbage flavor going on. It's pretty solid, really nice. It also comes with a piece of bread, of course, for dipping. Oh yeah. So we also got some prawn linguini. The prawns that come with it look really plump and they look really good as well. The prawn is nice and plump and firm, so it has a really nice texture. And then the pasta itself is really simple. It's like garlic, olive oil, and dried basil, I believe. So it's really simple, but it's really delicious. So of course, we gotta get some classic calamari. They're pretty big, not gonna lie. There's also like a red sauce with it, so we'll see what that is. Mm. Mm. That's pretty good. There's definitely like Asian flavors in here. It's almost like a sweet chili combined with some Vietnamese like nook mop, kinda. I hope I'm right, but yeah, really, really like this. So we got some of their lamb san choy bao. It's it's not actually a bao. It's like a it's a it's a it's a lettuce cup. It's got some like lamb mince and stuff and some mung beans. Let's taste. Mm. 
Mm, that's really nice. The lamb is very nice and flavorful. It's got like Asian flavors, like even like generic Asian flavors. That's all. That's the best descriptors I can I can get. You know, it's, it's not too heavy because of the lettuce cup. It's a pretty good dish. All right, next this is some huevos rancheros, a traditional Mexican breakfast item. But this one's got some beans, some bacon, some halloumi. Even got like some mint pieces, some some chopped up tomatoes and onions. It's got the works and some tortillas at the bottom. Oh, there's oh look, there's a treasure trove of black beans at the bottom. Mmm, interesting. I'm gonna get some tortilla, some egg, some halloumi, and I don't wanna get too much bacon, but some bacon as well, and hopefully some beans. All right, one perfect bite. Mm. Ah, you know this is a comforting dish. I can see why this is a very popular breakfast item in Mexico, especially with those runny, runny eggs. The bacon and halloumi are just are just a nice addition to this dish. Overall, yeah, it's a it's a great breakfast dish. Uh, next stop, we awkwardly just quartered a pork belly burger. It looked really crispy. It has like some nice crackling going on. Let's take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Like the pork belly is not the most tender or juicy, but it's it's, it's enough. And that that slaw gives some nice sweet acidity. Kind of wish there was a bit more sauce though, just to counteract the that massive pork hunk. The skin is pretty crispy, and it's a decent burger. All right, last dish. We are by the sea, of course. So we got some local Orongo Bay oysters. I'm very excited. All right, so for these three oysters, I'm gonna put three different sauces just to get that variety. First one is gonna be some lemon. Ah. That's enough, not too much. Second, some Tabasco. Yep. And finally, this like vinegar-ish sauce with I think some red onions. Perfect. All right, first one, that vinegar with the red onions. Ah, that acidity just count beautifully counteracts that seafoodiness and I love, I love the red onions, man. Next one, lemon. Mmm, mm, that's, that's good. It's good. It's lemon and oyster. Classic combo. Finally, another classic combo: Tabasco with oysters. Ah, mmm. You love that vinegar, spicy kick. I also had one by themselves, and the Orongo Bay oysters, the local oysters here, they're pretty clean, have a nice neutral flavor, not seafoody at all. Very nice. Man, after that food, I am just at peak relaxation here at Butterfish next to the seaside. Oh, just sitting by the sea here in this beautiful, peaceful town of Russell. It's, it's just the vibe. Take a shot every time I say vibe, man. We, that was just a beautiful lunch. All right, we're making our way back to the town and that's gonna do for Russell, for our day trip to Russell. New Zealand's first capital in a very small, peaceful, relaxing town steeped in history. Definitely visit it if you are in the area. It is quite accessible to Paihia, just a short car ferry away. But yeah, definitely if you're just looking for a place to relax, unwind, just soak in the sun, the waves, the cool sea breeze, Russell is your boy. Anyway, we're heading back to the car now and it's time to head back home, sadly. Let's go. Okay, so we made it to the Warkworth driving range and this also marks the end of our four-day North Island road trip. We went to Paihia, all the way to Cape Reinga, Keri Keri and Russell and the beauty of New Zealand never ceases to amaze me. Overall, I just had a huge amount of fun exploring Northland for the past four days. Anyway, thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel videos here in New Zealand and see you guys on the next one. Oh, that swerve, right? <laughs> Chunga, man. It's my seat. All right.